Oh, it's half past three in the morning. <sighs> we have to go catch a plane to find some fish tacos. Hi there guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to try something a little bit different. We're going to be flying off to La Paz to try and find some perfect fish tacos so I can come back and recreate them. We are now here in La Paz and if you don't know, La Paz is in Baja California, Mexico and is famous for its fish tacos. So we're going on a little hunt in La Paz to try and find the best tacos. But well, first I feel we need to get one with our fish tacos. So we're gonna go scuba diving for, well, to be one with the fish. And look, we found some friends. This is an amazing little colony of seals just off the coast of La Paz. Absolutely incredible time. Anyway, we're gonna go back to shore and just look at that sunset. That's our first night here, incredible. So we're gonna make our way to our first restaurant called Bismarck and it turns out they stop selling tacos at six o'clock. So we tried these giant clams that when you put lemon on them, they start moving because literally they've just been shucked. They were incredible to be honest, really good. But no luck on fish tacos until the morning where we tried this place, Tacos El Estadio. This is apparently a really well-known place with the locals, so it has to be good. It's not touristic or anything, and it's incredible. They just specialize in seafood tacos, shrimp, marlin, and different kinds of fish. They give it to you quite bare, and you've got to top it with all these different salsas and onions and coleslaws and everything, and just look at that. They're absolutely incredible. And like, wow, what a start to the fish taco search. But now we're going to randomly go on some races through the desert to a little town called Los Barriles to see if we can find any more fish tacos. And this was absolutely incredible. So much fun racing through the desert around these incredible landscapes that I've never been in before. Beautiful coastlines. And yes, you have to stop to take a picture. Look at that. So after an incredible day racing through the desert, we're going to have to find some more fish tacos for us. And we tried this place called Beans and Rice. It's a bit of a gringo place, but on the inside, extremely Mexican. Beautiful colours and amazing fish tacos, but this time not battered, but topped with similar things. And i got to say, they were really nice as well. So after stopping off at Hotel California just to see, we went down to the beach to find one more lot of tacos. So after having an incredible Cubano, the tacos came, and yet again, they were not battered, but still incredible. Fish straight out of the sea that morning. And I gotta say, they were incredible. Right, and so we're back in the kitchen, and what did we learn? We learned that racing through the desert was like, awesome and that fish tacos can be many different styles like from battered or non-battered and you know, many different toppings on it and so I'm going to show you how to make the most amazing fish tacos with the fish that we caught while we were scuba diving there, what's that? Well, I'm going to show you how to make fish tacos Right then guys, so we're going to get started by making our very own chipotle mayonnaise so into a jug, crack one whole egg then we're going to add a touch of vinegar and a little squeeze of mustard Make sure you season it well. Then we're going to open a can of chipotle. If you don't know, chipotle is just jalapenos that have been smoked and then stored in a can and they got this beautiful, red, rich, amazing flavor. Well, I'm just going to put three little pieces of chipotle into the jug. I'm going to top it with 300 milliliters of your choice of oil. I went with a soya oil, as it doesn't add any overpowering flavors to the mayonnaise. Then you just want to give it a little mix to emulsify it all together. Then just add a squeeze of lemon at the end, check for seasoning, and I'm just going to transfer it to a plastic bowl for easy distribution later on. And then we're gonna make ourselves a very quick coleslaw to top the tacos with. I'm using a quarter of a white cabbage, sliced down nice and fine like this, spread it out so you can get nice even cuts. And to that, I'm gonna add a quarter of a red cabbage as well, give it some nice color. But again, you wanna slice it down nice and fine before throwing it in a bowl with some sultanas, roughly chopped. Then add a good amount of salt and cracked black pepper. Then a big dollop of some nice homemade mayonnaise. Finish it off with some paprika and some dried garlic powder, and then give it a good mix together. Until you get something that looks like this. And then we're going to make a nice, easy Mexican salsa, also known as pico de gallo. So start by dicing up one tomato, and then dicing a quarter of a white onion, and very finely dicing a jalapeno. I take the seeds out of this one because I don't want too much heat. And then we're going to throw in some rough chopped coriander, or cilantro, depending where you're from in the world, and the juice from one whole lime. Season well with salt, and a splash of maggi, and a touch of vinegar. 
Then give it a good mix together. Now onto the guacamole, we're going to de-seed half a tomato and dice it nice and fine. Then slice and scoop out the insides of two perfectly ripe avocados. Stick it in a bowl with some lime juice, some salt and some cracked black pepper and give it a good mush together with a fork. And then remember you could have used your mortal and pesto that you uh, forgot you had and the actual traditional way to make guacamole, so... Anyway, put it in a bowl, leave it to one side and it's time to make our batter. I decided to make use of these cake tins that I had lying around as they are perfect for storing our batter. So into them I pour 100 grams of flour, a touch of garlic powder and a touch of paprika with plenty of salt, give it a little tiny whisk round and start adding in about half a bottle of dark Mexican beer until you get a nice consistency like this, not too loose, not too thick. And then into another cake tin, we're just gonna salt some flour ready for the fish. You know, that fish we caught when we were scuba diving. So we're just gonna chop it up into decent sized pieces, little fingers. And then we're gonna dip it into the flour, give it a good shake around, make sure it's fully coated. And then we're gonna dip it straight into the batter. Before you throw it into the oil, you wanna check the temperature of the oil by dipping in a touch of batter. If it goes too brown, too quick, it's too hot. So add some extra oil to cool down the temperature before you drop the fish in. You want to get it about 180 degrees. This is if you don't have a thermometer that is. But stick it in the pan and you want to cook it for about three to four minutes until it's nice and golden brown. Make sure you move it around in the pan as well so it doesn't stick together. And then when it's ready, drain it on paper towel to get rid of all the excess oil and make sure you season it straight away. As I'm lucky enough to be in Mexico, I have access to some amazing tortillas, so I'm not going to make them from scratch because, you know, it's Mexico. But you want to lightly toast them on a pan until they look like this, and then we can start piling up our tacos. So chop your fish in half just to make it more manageable size pieces, and you can see how beautiful that is all the way through the middle. And then throw on some guacamole. Never have enough guacamole. Top it with some of that beautiful coleslaw. Drizzle over some of that chipotle mayonnaise that we put in a bottle for easy distribution. Then sprinkle over some of the pico de gallo, and then top it with a bit of cilantro and then hold it up to the camera to make you all really, really hungry. And so there you go, that's uh, fish tacos. And I think I did a pretty good job. Uh, they look pretty incredible. Uh, now we're just gonna taste them and see what it's like. So here we go. Squeeze on yet another lime over the top. That is incredible. It's so easy, especially if you have good ingredients. But if you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, I'll see you in the next one, and remember to just keep cooking.